Welcome everyone to the Starting Points Education Channel podcast. Tonight, we're lucky enough to have our founder, Vince DePitsqua, De join us. Um, and he is going to be talking about applying the steps to your daily life. But before that, let me give him a little bit of an introduction for those of you who don't know him, which are not many. He started a starting point 42 years ago. Um, it's a little different than it was then, but he continues to save lives and he turns no one away. And that is what makes the starting point so very special. Um, for those of you that, are, that don't know, we are a nonprofit education and referral program for those struggling with mental health and addiction challenges. I want to thank all of you for participating tonight. Um, if you have any questions, feel Come free on, to put them in the chat and we will, um, we will actually um, try to get to them before we finish up. So without further ado, Vince, um, let's start. Let's jump right in there. So how do you apply the steps to your daily life? Well, I think one of the things, just to give a little bit of history to show you how this came about, <clears throat> when the early founders put the steps together, I think they had a lot of wisdom and also a lot of help from the higher power. Because in the 12th step, they added that phrase, practice these principles in all of your affairs. And literally what they were saying is that the principles of these steps can be applied to anything in life. They can be applied to your relationship with self and with others. They can be applied to raising your kids. They can be applied to your community, your neighborhood. They're basically principles to live by, also to be able to interact with others in the process of it. And so even for parents, they're a great parenting tool. I know on a personal level, I've used them as a therapeutic tool. So there's something that really connect and I can share on a personal level with a lot of this because the steps have helped me in a lot of areas in my own life which are really important and so there's kind of a background for it anyway Loretta. Okay so Vince you know you have that list of 12 spiritual words that are really from the steps um can you um can you sort of just read down the list so we know where we're starting Okay. What I did, because most of you who know me know I like to keep things simple. So what I did when we talked about the principles of the 12 steps, I put them into single words. This is what helps me. This is kind of my format. And the 12 simple words I use to connect with the 12 steps are the words acceptance, faith, trust, honesty, sharing, humanness, humility, forgiveness, healing, reflection, prayer, and service. And I use these principles, and I, I put them in these simple words, because you can use these basic words and these principles in all of your dealings, personally with yourself and then with others. Example, in relationships a lot of times, you know, so many times we get caught up in wanting things to be the way we want them to be. But in a relationship, when you're connected with another human being or other individuals, you have to be able to understand acceptance. You have to be able to accept people where they're at, not where you want them to be. That even applies to our kids. You know, it's the same thing. A lot of times in faith, you have to have a sense of faith and trust in things that we do. And I really do believe that it's something we have to kind of live our life by. And so when we really... You know, you heard the term, you take an act of faith, you take a risk, sure. you try things. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful stuff when you come down to it. Well, Vince, there's one word that I stumble over in, the, in this list, and that's humanness. Um, I guess there's good and bad of that, correct? Well, we're, we're human beings. So we have a sense of our humanness, which means we have to acknowledge it. You know, in everything that we do, we have to acknowledge the fact that we're human. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to screw up once in a while. Isn't it wonderful? It's fantastic. See, we're supposed to make mistakes. We're not supposed to do it perfectly. 
the most important thing is in, all, in everything we do in life, we, we make mistakes with our kids a lot of times because a lot of times, what do we do? We push them. We really want the, something really good for them. And then they have a tendency not to go the way you want them to go, which means they have a life of their own. And we, sometimes we have a hard time with that. We have to realize the fact that even the fact that we have a hard time with it is part of our humanness. You know, just to feel that, you know, because I kind of, I, I can look at my kids and say, you know, I wish they wouldn't do that. Now they're older now and they do things maybe I don't like what they're doing. But the reality is I have to accept it. I have to have a sense of faith and hope and a little bit of trust. And hopefully they'll learn their lessons from it too. I think sometimes we have a tendency to be scared to allow people in our life to make mistakes. And it's part of being human. And what, I is that, what is that about? Why, why do we have to be perfect and all of those things? I think it's because we were born that way. Oh, that, okay. So it is humanness, right? It's the, the thing that... Everything in life, you know, has a pro and a con. So when I screw up, I mean, I got to be able to, you know, it's the other part of this, I have to be able to acknowledge it, you know, seek forgiveness and healing and maybe change and move to another direction. That's all. You learn. Even in relationships, a lot of times, people have differences in relationships. We're not the same. So as a result, then, we have to realize the fact there's got to be a give and take in everything we do in life, no matter what it is. Otherwise, we get caught, we get caught up in the ego. We think we have all the answers. I tell you, I'm, if you have all the answers, it means you're nuts or sick, one of the two. Is, right? that, is that what the higher power, I mean, the reference in the steps is always the higher power. That's to allow us to realize we're not the end all of the world. Our ego. Yeah, I think the other piece of it is I, I, when I was applying these to daily everyday life, I don't always use the word higher power. I kind of like the word higher presence, but I, I, I use the word faith and trust because to believe in something is to have faith. And to believe that things will go where they're supposed to go is to have faith. And so, you know, faith is connected to something greater than ourselves. And that leads us back to the fact that, you know, we're not islands. We need each other. We're connected to each other. We learn from each other. Even those human issues you talked about, you know, even our screw ups are actually learning moments. They're growth moments in our life. That's okay. You know, so that's where, that's where the other words like forgiveness comes into play, healing you know, making peace, reflecting on what we do in our behavior and changing it and moving in new directions with it. So there's a lot of different things you can do in applying these steps to your daily everyday life. That's the fun part about it. You know, I, I mean, just to share with you on a personal level, I feel the 12 steps for me are a much deeper spiritual program than all the theology I studied in my life because they're just simple, simple principles of life. And I think what lear I'm learning in my life today is simplicity is the key to everything. You know, enjoy who you are, enjoy the moment. It's that simple stuff. So when we were talking earlier about the 12 steps, we talked about it's sort of taking responsibility for yourself, but knowing when to ask for help, is that? That's the secret to everything. You know, you're responsible for yourself, yeah, but I can't do it by myself. I mean, my wife's sitting right next to me. I got to ask her plenty of times for help. She knows it. And she asks me for help a lot of times. Still, we help each other. And so help is not just that. I, I belong to a 12-step program. I have to ask people for help. I, I get support from people. It's, it's that concept of back and forth. And that's where the other word comes into play about service. And the word prayer, because prayer is just simply communicating and asking for help. That's the key to everything. You know, I love the old timers in AA. They used to say, the secret to life is to ask for help and guidance every day in everything that you do. 
and realize the fact that it's part of learning, it's part of growing, you know, and it takes a lot of humility to realize the fact you don't know something. Isn't that wonderful? It's great. Much more fun. Prince, you said something, I'm sorry, I'm going backwards, but you mentioned um, you use higher presence instead of higher power. How would you define how higher presence then? Well, higher presence simply means there's something we don't know. Instead of defining it, it's something that we feel is there to help us and guide us and things that we do in life. So for a lot of people who have a hard time with the term higher power or with the term God or things to that effect, the term higher presence gives them another way to look at it. It's almost like there's a lot of things in life I can't explain. You know, I can't explain a lot of times things about my own life. Some things I just have to accept and realize the fact. Take, for example, handicaps, things that happen in the world, things in that direction. I, I don't always under, understand them all. You know, why do I have this ache and this pain? Because maybe it's giving me more humanness. Realize the fact that I, you know, I don't have a perfect body. You know, I don't care how many weights you lift, it doesn't make a difference at all. You're never going to have a perfect body because you're human. You know, I tell you this all the time, you know, we, you're still going to make noises every once in a while and go through changes every once in a while. That's the fun part of being human. You know, I mean, you have to eat a nice meal, you belch. We did it to the babies all the time. Why can't we belch too? So it's all part of it. I, I, it was my understanding that in some families that says the meal was very good, correct? Right. Now, you, now, now you're speaking Italian. Oh, uh, well, that's who I was referring to. <laughs> it's either the meal's real good, otherwise you have gravy on your shirt. Okay, that's the, that it wasn't great. It's gravy on your shirt. Okay, I have to remember that. I told my wife, my, my father used to always put um, a dish towel. You know, okay, sure. You know, he's tucking it in here every time we ate. You know, you know, had the big dish towel hanging down. Not understand why. I you know, love it. You're in the back because she knows me. <laughs> you got to laugh at life. Come on. You know, we all got our side stuff. That's a fun part about it. Vince, I just want to go to the spiritual side of things. When you use the term spiritual, you're not talking religion. You're not talking God. You're talking greater than ourselves, correct? Well, the word spiritual really, the definition of it really comes from Latin and Greek. And the word actually, if you look at the Latin and Greek, it's spiritus actualis, which means an actualization of, of your spirit. And so the way the founders did it in the program and the way we look at the word spiritual, it's going on a journey of self-discovery, on a journey of developing who you are as a person. But above all, you can't do that alone. And so the steps teach us that, you know, we meet people in life, even in relationships. Why do they come into our life? We can't understand it a lot of times, but they come into our life to be a teacher. They're part of our journey. Some stay, some leave, some go other directions. You know, some people hurt us. Some people we celebrate and enjoy. You know, it's that mixture of everything that makes them as a beautiful combination of life. You know, so it's the simple little things like that that make life what they are. And so spiritual simply means that I'm on a journey on this earth to discover the gifts that I have on the inside and to learn something new and grow. So I really believe, I said this so many times in my life, the higher power gave us all of our gifts. We have them already. We just have to, we have to discover them. That's all. Because, you know, I always love the line in the 12 steps and the second step, especially where it says, I'll be returned to sanity. I never knew I was sane, but now I understand be returned to it because at the moment of my birth was the sanest moment of my life. And then I kind of got caught up in all this stuff out here in life, it's called. And then I have to return to it. I guess you got to rediscover stuff. That's all. You know, you know, we'll just go look at it as an adventure. 
that's why I love the steps because uh, as an example, you can use them basically in your business. How many times in a business if you really are honest? Here's the part. Uh, you know, you, you have to accept certain situations. They are what they are. You know, I mean, I can use plenty of examples in that. Even when I was in church, you know, I spent a good portion of my life trying to change the whole entire church. That was fun, by the way. You know, it's very simple. I want them to change for me. Well, the bottom line was, it was my issue, not theirs. But I don't want to look at my issues. What are you, crazy? It's much more fun to look at your issues. See that? You know, I can look at Billy's issues and Pat's issues, everybody else's issues. I've got to look at mine. Whatever. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> but the bottom line is, you realize the fact the hardest thing in the world to do is look within and then to give that spirit to your kids, you know, to your job, to what you do, you know, and so many times in life we just, we're living, but we're not living. That's the scary part, you know, so. You know. And are the steps almost like coping skills? Things? Principles, coping skills, you can give them a thousand names. Okay. You know, but, you know, it's really interesting because the founders actually, 2,500 years ago, a gentleman named Latu, I know, is a Chinese philosopher, wrote the Tao Te Ching, the 81 verses of the Tao, or he, he called them the 81 principles of life. People had a hard time with them. You want to know why? They were so yeah. simple. They were so simple. You know, and, and yet we have a hard time. So they took those principles and they developed them, the founders did around alcoholism to give people a way to deal with their alcoholism and to change their life. But I don't, I know they were divinely inspired because I really believe that they really know this was gonna to apply to all different aspects of life. But a wise thing, wise person, you know, if you look at the manuscript of the big book, you know, a wise person, I always tell you who the wise person is, Dr. Bob, you know, <laughs> I call him Saint Dr. Bob, I love the guy. But Dr. Bob put these real beautiful spiritual principles into the steps. He said, don't forget, don't just use the steps to deal with your alcohol problem. You have to learn to use the steps to deal with life. That's why he said, practice these principles in all of your affairs. My only objection to that was they could have used a different word than affairs. They should have used life or something, you know. <laughs> now you gotta be careful with addicts. Oh, they tell me it's okay for me to have affairs. <laughs> Crazy, you know. So, well, Vince, that, that explains why so many groups that we have at the starting point, all different, you know, debtors anonymous, gamblers anonymous, they're all using the 12 steps to address their issues. Correct. But I think in all those groups, and believe it or not, right now, we have, there are 21 different 12-step groups around the country. Okay. And it's amazing how the steps have kind of branched out. But they actually are steps that can teach you how to handle situations. So like, for example, Gamblers Anonymous. The 12 steps are not just to keep them from gambling, it's to help them to build a life without gambling. And so it's the same thing in every, everything else we do in life. You know, if, if, if we're a mother, you know, I, I shouldn't really say that I'm not a mother, but anyway, if you're a Muslim, I, I guess sometimes people accuse me of being their mother, but that's all right. <laughs> the bottom line is, you know, I, I tell them what to do all the time, what can I tell you? But anyway, if you're a mother, then you basically, I've learned to nurture your children, <clears throat> to help them in the growth process. But the bottom line is, if you have eight kids, let's say, that's a big family. Anyway, the fact that it's ironical, when I taught, did my training when I was in the seminary out in Emmitsburg, Maryland, mm -hmm. at high school, we have families with 22 kids. Wow. Can you imagine that poor mother? <clears throat> 22 
there was a big farmland, you know. So, you know, I, I don't think we'll see too many of that around here, though. No, I don't think so. But, you know, you look at your kids, and if you have five, six kids, whatever you have, <clears throat> excuse me, each one of those kids is unique, is an individual. Right. Different. So I've got to learn through the principles of the steps. I use the principles, you know, I have to accept each one as they are, not as I want them to be. Even though I may not like some of them the way they are. Maybe I'd like them to be someplace else, but you know, like I tell you, but acceptance is such a beautiful spiritual word. Just as faith, trust, you know, to believe in that trust is to realize the fact that Somehow, some way, that higher presence, that higher power, God, whatever you choose to call it, will be led if we just are open to life, open to the journey of life. And we're going to have struggle. Damn right we are. We're supposed to. Is it hard sometimes? Yeah. And we're going to go through turmoil? Yeah. You know, but the, the bottom line is, what's the secret? The steps teach us that. Honesty, sharing, healing forgiveness face them embrace them don't run away from them don't hide them i mean i spend half my life hiding from everything i don't want to hide anymore and so you learn from the experiences of life around you you know so that's just the key to all the things that we do in life but also we can learn part of our humanness is to have fun too you know you gotta laugh at yourself have a good time yeah. Vince, this is the piece that I always have trouble with, not having fun. I know how to do that. It's the acceptance <laughs> piece. <laughs> it's I give you a hard time on that one. It's accepting that person at work that drives you crazy. And no matter what you do, um, you know, he has an office next door to you. Not you, Vince. <laughs> She's talking about me. I know that. <laughs> I, have the same, I have the same problem with the lady next door to me. I know you do. <laughs> but seriously, okay. when you have those work situations where, I mean, I know we're blessed because we're lucky. We like each other. But, you know, I know I've been in other work situations where you sh share a cubicle with somebody that you just, their habits aren't your habits. And, you know, that acceptance piece wears pretty thin eight hours a day. Well, you might feel like you want to hit them over the head with a chair. That's what I was implying. But don't do that. Okay. <laughs> but you can feel your feelings. Acceptance doesn't mean take your feelings away. You can feel your feelings. You don't have to like them. But you have to be able somehow to, and this is the hardest part, somehow come to a point where you can look at them and try to see them as one of your teachers. That goes, yeah, hey, okay. But. Maybe they're teaching you patience and tolerance. You know, you, you never know. Right. Maybe somehow, some way, you can work through that. But the bottom line is, if they're a pain in you know what, you have to accept the fact that they are. Leave them alone. Try to, try to pull something from it. Or get a new cubicle. Move. That's what they, really move is the way to, to solve it. Oh, okay, well, let's take something more serious. You've been diagnosed with a terminal illness. And, you know, the acceptance piece, well, do you accept or do you fight? Or do you do both? You know, do you accept the fight? I, I guess I'm just a little confused. Anytime there. you experience a terminal illness or you experience something that's really, really, really deep and tough, you're going through a change process in your life. So you're, you're not just going to accept it overnight. I mean, everything in life is a process, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> One second. Let me get a sip of water here. You're not going just to accept things overnight. <clears throat> you may have to be angry at it, be frustrated with it, try to run away from it, try to deny it. But there will come that moment <clears throat> in time when you'll be able to go through all this and come to that point of acceptance. But it's going to involve, here's the, here's the steps again. 
It may involve prayer. It may involve getting help from other people, asking for guidance, asking for direction. It may have to get to a point where I've got to get honest with what's going on in my life. And then maybe I've got to move to a different direction with it. But I can only do that when I'm ready. So I can talk about the principles. Now, I live by these principles to the best of my ability. But did I do this my whole entire life? No. You know, I, the first 44 years of my life, even though I was around these principles, I was around the steps, I never did them. Because back then, I was what you call a famous two-stepper in the program. You know, you do the first step and then you do the 12th. Don't worry about the 10 between. Go save the world, you know. Even if it doesn't want to be saved, you go save it anyway, you know. And so, you know, we did crazy things back then. But I realize now it's almost like you got to go through the fire to kind of get to the serenity and the peace. And that deals with a terminal illness or any kind of trauma stuff to that effect. It's got to be faced. But, you know, what am I going to do at first? I don't want to face it. Then eventually I've got to face it. And eventually, somehow, some way, nature, everything else will take place. And I have to go through it. When you lose someone, I mean, one of the big examples would be people whose kids die, uh, die of drug addiction or suicide or something to that effect. You know, it, you think they're going to accept that overnight? Right. No. And so really in reality, it's going to take time. It's going to take time for them to work through that. It's not the easiest thing in the world. And, I, and people that lose children, you know, whew, that's much more powerful than losing an adult. And so again, the steps come into play because they help you to go through a healing process over a period of time. But again, like we tell people all the time, even going through the grieving process, don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. But you will try in the beginning first to do it alone. Then it's okay to ask for help and ask for guidance. That's part of it. What are you going to do? So, I mean, and that goes for anything in life. I don't care what it is. I mean, you can take it to a lighter level. You know, if you, you're going through a divorce, a major change effect in your life, you know, a major job change, doesn't make any difference. You're still going to go through the different things here. You know, maybe I really like my job. It's really great. I really have enjoyed it all my life. And then all of a sudden, it comes to an end. That's a death. It's sad. Now I got to go do something I don't really want to do. Right. And so I'm going to have to what? Here comes the other spiritual word that goes with acceptance. I have to adjust to it. Now I have to be able to accept it the best I possibly can. And that's the thing about the steps. They always tell you to work them the best you possibly can. And believe me, when I tell you this, back to the humanness again, you're not going to do it perfectly. And that's where that, that thing in the bottom about service comes into play. You know, you have to give stuff away to get it back. There's a give and take about life back and forth, you know. I mean, my wife and I talk about this a lot, you know. We, we have three girls, you know, and they're, they're all on their own journey, you know. And sometimes we often say, we don't want to know what they're doing. Please don't tell us. It's better that way sometimes, Vince, you know? not knowing. But at the same time, a part of you still wants to know. Now, come on. Right, right. Okay. And at the same time, you may not totally agree with everything they do. But, there's an element underneath of it all. There's the love you have inside of yourself that you can accept and have faith that somehow, some way they'll find their way and give them the freedom to be able to do that. You know, and, and the same thing with your grandkids or anything in life, no matter what it is, even with your profession where you teach or, you know, no matter what you do, you have to look at it with a positive attitude. I remember when I used to do EAP programs for the water department in Philadelphia, I did workshops. I also did them for the city and I gave a workshop to the garbage collectors. You know, imagine doing a workshop for a whole bunch of garbage collectors 
That had to be fun. Underneath of a, the, 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 what do you call it, the Taikoni Pomala Bridge. Oh, no. <laughs> when they did it outdoors. They, had, they backed the trucks up and they all sat on the back of the trucks. And they said to us, What's the, what do you mean, look at my job positively? I collect garbage all day. I said, no, 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 no. You're not a garbage collector. You're a sanitation worker. Without you, this whole entire city will be filled with disease and vermin. You see what I mean? All of a sudden, your job becomes important. But it comes down to how do I view it? How do I see it? So the steps help me to view things with a different set of eyes, to be able to open to new things, to look at them differently. Well, they, not, yeah. Talk about the steps as we say, come out of the pandemic. How are they helping? How can they help us adjust to this different world that we now live in? Well, first of all, we have to accept the fact that things are not going to be the same. Too many people come out of a pandemic or a tragedy or something and they want things to be just the way they were before. And we all know that doesn't work. But sometimes it's hard to accept that. So I have to come out with a sense of faith, a sense of risk, a sense of trust, you know. And believe me, it's not easy, even for myself. I got very much used to, you know, working with uh, Mrs. Zoom over here, you know. <laughs> I got Mrs. Google on the phone. I got Mrs. Zoom. And I got very used to this. And as a result, then basically, you know, I had to make some adjustments, even adjustments to sitting down again, talking to somebody one on one in person. Right. Totally amazing. And yet, you know, you have to realize it's all part of the adjustments you have to make in life constantly. And so we have to look at things happen for a purpose. So what do I do? I have to try as honest as I can and be willing and open. You know, there's that sense of humility again, okay? The pandemic was something terrible, but what can I grow, what can I learn from it? How can I grow from it? How can I find something positive out of it to help me in my growth process? For a lot of people, it's not gonna be easy. So if people have love, uh, um, lost loved ones, it's not gonna be easy. But even that, in time, time, and you know, things begin to happen. So there's a trust level involved in the steps, which is really important to come right down to it. I love the steps, I can't help it, because they, they really help me look at life through a much simpler plane, you know, and that idea of doing service or, you know, sharing who you are with others. Because I really believe today, you know, Michael can tell you that. When I share, it comes back, right? That's the way, the way it works. It's all part of it. It's part of the recovery process and how it works. You know, so we're connected to each other, which means we're brothers and sisters to each other. That's all. I mean, good guy got a ton, ton of brothers and sisters. It's not bad for being an only child. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we talk a little bit about forgiveness, specifically like in our daily life that we forgive ourselves some of the stuff we do. Well, forgiveness and healing go together. I think in life, we're constantly in the process of healing. Healing is a slow process. And we're in the process of healing from different situations that occur in our life. But healing always, always takes time. It takes patience. And things happen a little bit at a time. And so forgiveness means I have to first of all forgive myself for the ways and maybe which I've hurt others and then be open to the gift of forgiveness so I can forgive, but maybe not forget. So I'll go back to the same thing over and over again. But forgiveness is always a big part of life. Because again, it goes back to what I said in the beginning, when you're making all kinds of mistakes, you may do something that's kind of stupid. I've done plenty of stupid stuff, so I don't worry about that. And then to be able to have to go back, you know, and then basically say, I'm sorry, to ask for forgiveness, and to be able to say, you know, how can I repair it the best I possibly can do? 
And that's especially when you've done something major happens in the course of your life, which is a big part of it. So Vince, when you apply these steps to your life, are you doing one a day? Are you doing uh, one a month? Are you doing daily meditation on them? No, the steps are just a way of life. You never know when you're going to be connected with any parts of them at all. That's why I've often said you can do a step study and go through the steps, but living them is a whole different ballgame because at any given day, I experience powerlessness. Any given day. On any given day, I can experience having to come to the gift of acceptance. On any given day, you know, I want to go through a, a lack of faith and have to develop a sense of faith and trust. Every given day, I got to say I'm sorry or learn something, grow. So it's a constant process of applying them just to your daily life on a regular basis. So, see, the steps to me are ongoing. They're just a way of life. They're principles to live by. And those principles, the, the, it's not like a cookie cutter thing where I do step one this month, step two that month. No. It's See, codependents need that. <laughs> they need the one month and it's two months. <laughs> codependents try to organize everything. Right, I, exactly. I have a card in my pocket tells me I qualify. So, I mean, the bottom line is... What do you want to organize life for? It's much more fun just to enjoy it. You know, enjoy the people around you. I mean, well, believe me, I have a hard time doing half of the stuff I talk about. It's part of, it's part of you know, the concept of humility and learning. It's all, yeah, it comes down to it. You know, as a result then, do I worry? Yeah. Do I go through changes? Yeah, sure. I mean, my wife will tell you right before I give any talk, I'm always a nerd. I'm always walking around pacing. I'm nervous. People say, how can you be nervous? You've been doing this for so long. I'm nervous. Please leave me alone. Let me be nervous. <laughs> you know, tonight I was walking around the house driving her nuts. You know, is it time yet? Is it time yet? <laughs> you know, so I mean, it's all part of it. You know, and you know, it's all part of the process of life. We enjoy, we have, you have to enjoy the people around you. But remember, everything changes. And so we have to be able to adjust to change. Yeah, accept these changes, you know. I told you last night, there's things today I can't do. I used to be able to do them easily. You know, there's things that hurt today that didn't hurt in the past. Yes, they do. <laughs> you know, also, uh, it's funny because I have this thing called, I, they call them senior citizen marks. Yeah. So I bump my arm against the thing, next thing you know, it's bleeding. And all I did was bump it. Must well, because my thin, my skin is getting thinner and thinner. Now, I can make believe it's not, but the little red marks on it tell me, you ain't gonna make believe with this one, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> And that's where you have to have a little bit of a sense of humor, even when things are not funny. You know, you go through aches and pains. I mean, it's part of life, okay? It's all part of the journey we gotta go through. I, I just get excited about the steps because I like the fact of being able to apply them and to live them and to connect them with others and to be able to share them with others in the course of our journey. That's the most important piece I love, you know? And that's why I love interacting with people in the program and in recovery because, you know, do I think everybody in recovery is wonderful and great? No, some of them drive me nuts, but I love them anyway. They're part of my family. And so look at the normal family system. Come on, will you? Do you think you always see brothers and sisters getting along with each other? One time they want to kill each other, then they love each other. Right. That's next, a real family. <laughs> next minute, stay away from me. Don't come near me. Next minute, I'm hugging you. That's the same thing in relationships a lot of times. The same thing in everything. It's the humanness that goes along with these different situations in life that is so important. That's why you started out this whole thing by talking about humanness, which to me is the key. It really is, Vince. It just 
that's the definition that is so um, startling that, you know, that's where we start and then all the others make perfect sense. You have to let go. You got to move on. It's all part of it. It's fun. It's life. Life is fun. A pain in the ass is my language. Sometimes it's got beauty in it. Sometimes it's got aches and pains in it. It's got a little bit of everything in it. We're going to go through loss. We're going to go through sadness. We're going to go through joy. Like I said yesterday, there's some days when, you know, I tell my wife, I say, let's close the blinds. Let's lock the door. And let's make believe there is no world out there. <laughs> but eventually you got to open the blinds and eventually you got to open the door. And guess what? It's still there. <laughs> So you got to go out there. That's, that's that faith and the trust. You got to take a risk. You got to do what you, I mean, look how many times you have faith and trust when you drive your car. Absolutely. Went down the highway. With all those crazy people out there driving. I know, you're one of them. Oh, I know, of course. <laughs> and so am I. So we're all jockeying back and forth and doing this. Right. Some way we get through. Now, mm. there's got to be faith and trust in that. Okay. Same thing as regards everything we do physically in our body. There's a sense of faith and trust, a sense of honesty. And honesty, remember, it's a beautiful thing. But always be honest with love. Don't be brutally honest. That's hurting somebody. Be honest with love. That's the most important thing. We learn that in life. I can share something with somebody because I love them and I care about them. But let's, let them know you love them. I tell parents a lot of times, if you're going to discipline your kids, before you discipline them, just say, look, I'm giving you this punishment because I love you. Because I want to see good for you. Always go I back. had an answer when my parents tried that on me. Love me a little less, please. <laughs> Do you know what? I say, gladly, but right now, I want to love you a lot. Oh, boy, I'm glad you were my dad. <laughs> I'll give you a timeout. Oh, I'm surprised you haven't started that in the office yet. <laughs> That's a good idea. I like that. I'll put you on timeout tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> well, Vince, this has been absolutely fabulous. This has been fun. It's fun. Uh, I've, I've learned a lot, I have to admit. So, so I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. We'll have Vince back again. The podcast series is taking a summer hiatus, um, so we'll be back in September. Um, I hope you will visit the Starting Points Education channel, um, and you can see other topics from anger management to eating disorders. And also, you should visit our website, which is very simple, startingpoint.org, and visit Vince's Corner, where a number of his lectures and workshops are available. So again, thank you and enjoy your summer.